Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, we're going to be going over the Coral Prison Dungeon Ranking Guide. And a couple of thoughts first, I just want to say, I, I didn't find this nearly as fun and definitely not nearly as challenging as previous dungeons that we've gotten to do. I think that's because the power creep with our weapons compared to the level of difficulty of the bosses is just so insane that the strategy to get a score like, um, you know, over 4.3 mil, over 4.3 million is basically just to obliterate everything before anything ever gets even a big move off on you. Um, although, you know, there is a challenge in that trying to get the highest score. It, it is lost out a little bit on the individual challenge that used to make these fun getting an S plus. <clears throat> or at least that's my take on it. Um, I miss these, but it's been so long now that I feel like I just wish it was a little bit more challenging. Um, I think I actually cleared the dungeon on my second attempt. And then from there, it was just how do I kill everything uh, without hardly taking any real significant damage? Um, I'd be curious to know your thoughts by the end of this. Um, also, real fast, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to try to do this all the way through without going over and redubbing my voice uh, because they have added some things in the settings here and I'm going to show that to anybody who doesn't know dungeon settings you can now increase the movement speed to 1.75 which is funny because I usually go around that setting uh, fast forwarding my clips but I do like to show my path and how I actually move around so that's kind of neat um, as far as battle settings too, if you haven't seen or haven't adjusted these, I always put buff and debuff icon details on. Camera setting, um, I do not want this to follow because it makes battles a lot worse. Uh, and then I also have not to auto see abilities uh, in manual mode, so I have true manual mode. Okay, uh, with that being said, I will get up or get into my team setup. And we're going to be doing EX. I didn't even attempt the other three because I knew this would be the one that you're going to need to have a score on. As, as far as to be competitive or to get the highest score you can. Coming over here, we'll look at the symbol enemy info. And essentially, the most important thing is you see that everybody is weak to water. So bring a water setup. I don't even think that in these runs I've done, you even need sigil break. The only thing I will say is that Lost Number particularly gives my team setup a little bit of trouble because he does uh, silence and usually almost every time he uses it on Tifa. So I will be explaining why I'm bringing a Asuna for silence in my team setup. Um, and here we go. So coming in, we're going to go through everybody and I'll start with Aerith because I think she's kind of the least important. Uh, you, I do need some heals. I couldn't do this run without a healer by not quite, a, not a lot. I mean, just a little bit, but I did need some. So I've set her up uh, with her anniversary weapon, but I, you know, it also is nice for the AOE uh, silence Asuna, just in case somebody else got silenced. Uh, it also provides that AOE heal while I'm doing it. Um, I'm bringing this. I don't actually really think it's that necessary. If you're taking some of the bigger hits, the magic defense up is really nice, but for the purpose of this guide, we're going to be trying to kill every boss before they get any of those big hits in, so it's really not going to matter. Um, her stats are pretty nice. I, like Magic attack being as high as possible, I guess, for her to chip in some water damage, that's about what it is. For sub-equipment, I tried a couple of different ways. I mean, I tried buff debuff extension, heal straight up as much water potency and magic i've gotten her magic attack up to as high as like six point something k didn't really seem to affect the score all that much so we're going with umbrella here for boost magic defense all allies and we're going with um rocket punch here for boost physical defense to all allies because the amount of damage you take if you are min maxing if you are killing people pretty quickly then lowering the amount of damage your team takes in fights that is a thing that comes into play. Also put stream guard on her uh, for boost magic attack all because I am doing all magical water damage. And I guess of note, because she has the umbrella or the uh, 
the Bahamut rod in her main hand. Uh, it's easy to max that out on her. I didn't, I, and I did actually max it. Uh, so I wanted to spread those out as much too, so that I'm not wasting anything uh, by overstacking it on one character. Coming over to Kate Sith, he is our Breacher and secondary water DPS. Uh, green Megaphone is actually pretty nice because it's uh, one of the weapons that not only breaches, but also has magic water damage. And so that's why we're using him for that. Um, I don't know. I could use red for water breach, but his doesn't have water damage that I can think of. So that would just weaken my overall team a little bit. Um, focusing on magic stat, magic ability potency, and water potency. You can see here, I was able to get him up to six or 8,000, sorry, magic attack. And then if we come over here, you can see I'm one point short of getting the 85% boost. And that is, that hurts my heart, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but we do have a uh, level four magic ability potency. And buff debuff extension, not really that important for him because he's going to be using this over and over again. Uh, down here, we do have Flower Vase for the magic attack increase for Tifa, because she's our main DPS. Um, I actually just ob 10 to this with a bunch of free ticket pulls. I actually picked up two copies. So 38 seconds is a pretty great number on that. But I can tell you, OB6, I think it would serve its purpose just fine. Uh, it also is a small heal, but mostly it's giving him some good R abilities so he can chip in some damage, and it's enabling Tifa to basically hit as hard as possible other than that i've just stacked him up with magic attack materia um basically my next three after my first three that go to tifa as far as sub equipment we're using serpent eater for some hp and water potency this is magic attack and water potency and down here we have magic attack all and some ability potency and then coming over to tifa she's going to be our main dps uh, she's got nine thousand magic attack and down here, we've perfectly hit uh, level 8 on Water Potency. And she's got uh, level 4 Magic Ability Potency. And don't remember, that's good for 45% and max stance. We're using OB10 Bunny Gloves. Uh, this also has um, a 3% you know, C Ability effect on the brand. So that's how she's at 875% there. We're kind of enabling her a little bit more with feathered gloves to increase her water damage. And then this, these are like my three highest materials for magic attack. So 7.5%, 7.6, and 5.1. <clears throat> and yes, those are my three highest. Not super impressive by any means. Uh, we're using Leviathan on her. And I guess I should have mentioned, I'm using Moogle Dance on him for the magic attack increase to all allies. I think you could also use dice. I've run some with dice. My score was not significantly different, but I think it just kind of helps keep everybody up there when you use it. Uh, we're using Leviathan on Tifa. We're using her costume for her water Arcanum. For sub equipment, I went uh, Orthodox Raven for HP and water. It's also one of my highest water potency sub weapons. Uh, here, Noble Collar, which is my next I guess highest attack that helps magic attack plus water potency and then protectors blade from sephiroth for the all ally magic attack and then boost magic ability potency so pretty straightforward because i'm not doing a whole lot of shenanigans here like i said there's there's not really a, a lot of strategy as far as the individual fights go it's just seek and destroy so uh dps an enabler and sub DPS and a healer and the healer, like I said, I think is kind of the weakest link, uh, but that's just how it shakes out for me. All right. Uh, without further delay, we will show a run. All right. So here we are. And I can tell you there's multiple different paths to take, but the one that I take I, is my favorite one especially for the particular setup that I'm using. We're going to go over here and fight the giant first. Um, I think he's just pretty simple to begin with. The first thing I want to do is actually use Hang In There on Tifa. I've tried this different uh, ways, and for some reason this one seems to work the best for me. 
We're gonna let her ATB build up. Feather Strike, come over here, Bloom and Spray, hold your ATB, and then just start unleashing on him with everybody. And we should have just enough here to finish him off before he gets the move off. Sometimes it's a, not quite that close of a call, but uh, yeah, pretty consistently. I mean, in fact, maybe the last seven, eight times in a row that I've ran this, I was able to kill him off before he got his giant swing off, which is nice because you're not taking damage. If you do take the damage, it's not the end of the world. You can easily still clear this. But for score purposes, you definitely want to take as minimal of damage as possible during these uh, fights. So, the actual trance abilities here are interesting. And I think all of these have a viable, like, reasoning to pick. This one here will make your life a lot easier because silence and darkness are very annoying. And the multiple different bosses have those. If you're running a physical attack team or physical attack, you know, water damage... I would probably recommend going with this one, but I don't. And so I'm really wanting the water potency and the magic defense is pretty nice. So I'm going to pick that one. I have completed runs using, using each one of those. And this is the one for my particular team that seemed like it was benefiting me the most. We're going to go over and do this add-on fight. Um, it's, I don't know. These add-on fights, if anything, are more just kind of an annoyance. But they're also something that has to, you have to pick up all the items, essentially. Because you want that uh, sweet, sweet unused item bonus at the end. And by the way, this run is going to be zero items. <clears throat> you know, there's no shame in using an item. But I think it, the item score is pretty big. So the best score you can possibly get is going to be typically one that uses no items if you can clear everything, obviously. All right, now we're going to come back over here and beat the, uh, I don't know, I can't remember if he's Mole claw Crawler or a um, different name on this one. Oh, Zetent Rattel. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing it correctly. Oh man, I misclicked there. Okay, just again, once you kind of debuff the enemy and buff up your team, you're just going to try to unload and do as much damage as possible, as quickly as possible. Not, not a whole lot to say about that there. But I would try to um, preserve just a little bit of ATB on Tifa uh, for this next fight that we're gonna do. Uh, because they will um, they will blind her and I want her to be able to get off her um, her water buff the score is not like super amazing 266 is about the low end of where my scores have been the highest one I got was 270 after the first two bosses um, so if you were really trying to min max you know try try to pay attention to where your scores are you know every like the second boss third boss Things of that nature. Here, I think it's either this one or this one. I would never pick this one on just about any team unless I was really like struggling to even clear this, like at all. Um, and I think this is just too, way too big to pass up. Uh, two pips permanently to magic attack up uh, from the start of the battle, and then 60% magic attack. Plus, we don't really need a lot of heal. That's just a no-brainer. Okay, coming over here, we're going to use our summon. This is a three boss fight, and we're just going to try to kill each one of them before they get their moves off. But we are going to start with Tifa. We're going to start with the middle one first. He's the first one to try to do a move. Getting our Feather Strike off, just because it is very important that if she got blinded, uh, we need her to still be able to uh, do her move. Moogle Dance, Tidal Wave. This will easily kill off that first guy. 
So we won't have to worry about taking that damage. That is by far one of my favorite limit break uh, cutscenes. Now we're going to start on the guy to the right. <clears throat> Didn't quite finish him off, which is unfortunate because we are going to take quite a bit of damage from that. And if you kill him fast enough, you actually get a, like, uh, well, if he starts his break mechanic, uh, where you have to sigil break him, if you kill him, then you get an actual boost. There. Oh my, my stance. <laughs> the moment that you realize your stance has been uh, depleting that whole time because your microphone was covering up the corner of your screen from your eye. Well, I guess it wouldn't be a Nightlight Dungeon ranking video if I didn't completely screw this up. Um, but okay, that's <laughs> that's what it is. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We're just going to have to see what this score ends up being, even with um, this bullshit. <laughs> this is so bad. And um, whatever. It is what it is, you know? Um... I guess I could I could re-record this, but maybe it's a little bit funnier to watch me just uh, fail away. This is the probably the most struggle I've ever had with this battle by this point. So I'm imagining this score is going to be like 70. Something pretty bad. And it should be up in the 130k range. Okay, 80k. It's still pretty bad, uh, but this is what happens when... I don't know. You try to record a video after you've flawlessly cleared this dungeon, like, I don't know, probably at this time point, like seven or eight times in a row. Um, okay, over here. I don't think this max HP reduction rate is is worth getting anywhere in here. Um, looking at these other two, physical attack, magical attack, pretty good. Let me break potency would be good, except for that is not gonna apply to summons. So I think your single target ability potency is just huge. We don't care that our summon potency goes down because at the end of the day, um, summon potency, I mean, we're not doing a summon very often. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we're doing single target damage over and over and over again. So I will take the 60% bonus to that all day long. All right, here we're actually coming into this fight uh, I would say pretty severely um, handicapped for the moment because of the fact that I am a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There there was the uh, silence, by the way, so just kind of go right through that. I'm a little on edge, I'm guessing, is maybe the correct call here or, or correct uh, way to describe that. Once you break his deal, he's going to metamorphize that's how you say that and essentially it's going to be based on whatever kind of damage you're doing is, is what I how I understand that and yeah anyway just keep jamming the buttons and <laughs> he'll go down uh, it's okay if you need to use tidal wave there to not take that hit uh, that is perfectly fine and the reason is We'll have plenty of time to build that gauge back up, even though he's the last uh, boss before we go to the final boss. All right. Here. Um, I think this is pretty much always going to be between these two. Um, again, I think if you're struggling more to clear it in general, this one is pretty strong. Uh, stacking up those defenses. Water potency is not bad at all. However, this this minus one ATB on magical and physical C abilities is just super good. It's especially good if you're going for high score against the last boss, because one of the things you need to do to kill the final boss before he gets his first move off is you have to breach him with water. Like, I don't know, minimum three times to be able to do any amount of damage to him. And so making those costs one less is super valuable. Okay, 
So now all we have to do is collect some items and then we can fight the final boss. The first one is going to be an add-on fight right up here. And as usual, just jam your abilities. Uh, there's not a whole lot that goes into this. Other than there will come a point where we do want to start kind of conserving ATB as far as to have that ready for the final boss. And that will do in the next add-on fight. Well, at least we'll do it to the best of our ability. All right, and again, that boss up here, that's like a distraction. That's, I mean, if you want the highest score possible, you don't wanna go fight that one. Down here, there's like this hidden fight, which I'm sure most of you got from the first time you were exploring around. And here we have the Cactuars. So just uh, start whacking them as much as possible. That's pretty much the best way to put that. Um, and then once we get down to, you know, a little bit less than half health on the second one, then we'll start, uh, we'll start being a little more careful about how we spend ATB. I start with the A1 because he is, they, they literally have like HP in the amounts of, I guess like A is the strongest, B is the second strongest. So I think it's easiest to conserve when you know you can just wall up one. And I'm mostly concerned with, I, I just want Tifa to have a little bit of ATB. I don't really care a whole lot about Kate's because we're not, we're gonna actually do a lot of holding on Kate's ATB in the beginning of this fight. There, so we're perfect. Almost everybody has like very close to full ATB. I know that's kind of a tedious fight, but it is really nice to be able to set yourself up like that before this final boss. And the fact that they take so many hits is actually what enables you to make sure that your summon gauges are full, um, even just between bosses without having to actually go to another boss. So here we've used zero items. Uh, Tifa's HP is terribly low. Um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, I used to try just jamming a water uh, jelly or whatever it's called. Sorry. Here we are. Um, using one of these water cocktails on her, whatever. I mean, that will definitely make it go faster. But for my team setup, it's actually not necessary. We just need to make sure that we uh, debuff him. And maybe you'll see me completely shit the bed here because it's what I'm kind of known for in these dungeon ranking events. So Tifa, jam your Aqua Splash as fast as possible. And then we're just gonna hold the ATB here actually for when he gets this done. And then we're gonna start jamming it. And then we're gonna come over to Tifa, Feather Strike, Aerith, buff everybody to get as much as we can out of it. And that should generally be enough um, after this hit here. Yeah, I mean, this is going to kill him. It's just making sure you have him broken with the water enough. And when you do the hang in there first, you'll actually be waiting to be able to cast your final water breach. And that is extremely annoying and actually can make it to where I've had it to where I wasn't able to quite get enough damage in on him. Because it doesn't really do a lot of good if Tifa's, you know, hitting her Aqua Splashes, but he's still got two or three pips of water resistance up. So, that is the entirety of it. 740 is quite low for me. I think my highest score was like 780 something. But when you forget to stand switch through, I don't know, for a solid 60 seconds in a battle, yeah, it's bound to happen bound to happen but again as i always say you know you can always still clear it even with some stakes ah, 4.26 
It's not an amazing score by any means, but honestly, it's it's not the worst score either. So that is what we've got. And I just want to point out here, unused item bonus, 1.146 mil. And I believe, oh man, I didn't, I didn't think that was going to click off. But I believe I can tell you that even just using like one item, I think took that score down for me by like over 100,000 points. Um, and that's significant to know just because you're not going to make that up by how much better you do in a fight. So the items are huge. It is the biggest single thing that I did to add to this score was to not use any items. So that's the run. Uh, not again, I apologize that it's, it's not really as interesting. I think for me anyway, as most of the other ones, but that is it. I hope that this helps you clear Coral Prison EX. Let me know your thoughts, your struggles. Again, other team comps could work for this too. The new Sephiroth would work pretty well if you went for his weapon. Uh, Glenn could obviously work really well. I've seen people running um, Angeal instead of Aerith, which could absolutely work too. So a lot of different things, but I this is my strongest water setup. I'm all in on Tifa and obviously Kate, so that makes the most sense. And they are, I think, particularly suited to this. Well, subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.